Good morning. My name is Alan Bunner. I'm a member of this congregation. We all know that our planet Earth is special. It's certainly the only livable planet in our solar system. But what I want to tell you is that it's far more special than you might think. Throughout history, people have wondered about life beyond the planet Earth. This haunting question permeates mythology and religion and, of course, science fiction. We're used to watching Star Trek and imagining hospitable planets everywhere. The idea that the universe is teeming with intelligent life forms is tempting. It's appealing. But is it credible? The experts are beginning to think not. And that new understanding is that the tiny planet we live on is more rare and remarkable than most of us realize, maybe even unique. The characteristics of our planet required an improbable combination of astrophysical and geological and biological events and circumstances. You may think of this talk as a testament of appreciation for what we have and an appreciation for how we got here. I'd like to tell you some of the attributes and historical features of planet Earth that make this little rock so unusual. Some of these things may be new to you. I feel it's important for us to understand just how rare and how fragile our conditions here are. So let's look at the facts. This story has many separate elements. The remarkable thing is that every one of them was required for our origin and our survival, no matter how improbable they were. Of course, we're just the right distance from our star. We have to be in the Goldilocks zone where liquid water is the norm. We know that our sun has increased its luminosity by about 30% during the time since the solar system was formed. That's pretty steady for some 4 billion years, the length of time required for us to evolve, unlike the lifetime and stability of many other stars. Somehow the Earth has been lucky enough to remain in the moving, habitable zone throughout this time. Earth has just the right mass. Too little mass and the planet's gravity cannot retain an atmosphere. Too much gravity and we become a gas giant like Neptune. Earth has the perfect mix of rock, metal, liquid water, and atmosphere. Gas giants like Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter would be impossible sites for technology to development. Too little water and you have a barren desert like Mars. Too much atmosphere and you have a greenhouse oven like Venus. And we have an atmosphere that's just right in density and composition to keep the planet warm with relatively stable temperatures over geologic timescales. Many of our planet's special features trace their origin to one day about 4.4 billion years ago. On this remarkable day, an astonishing chance event occurred. A Mars-sized protoplanet collided with the young Earth. This is now an agreed upon scenario for the origin of our planet. This extraordinary cosmic fluke gave our planet its axial tilt, its velocity of rotation, and its moon. Thus, we got both seasonal climate changes and tides, both thought to be a stimulus for evolution. A nearby large moon also increases the likelihood for plate tectonics through tidal forces, allowing for us to have both oceans and continents. Tectonics gives our planet an ever-changing surface, vital to the processes of evolution. This collision gave the young Earth a large iron core. Thanks to this, the Earth has a strong magnetic field, which deflects away the harmful cosmic rays that would otherwise shorten our lives. There's more. The existence of a massive outer planet, Jupiter, is thought to have had a special role in protecting the inner planets, specifically Earth, from later bombardment with life annihilating collisions. By accident of its location in the early solar system, Jupiter has been Earth's protector. Jupiter acts as a gravitational vacuum cleaner, sucking up incoming debris and preventing it from reaching the inner solar system. Without Jupiter, life on Earth might have been obliterated long before ever gaining a secure foothold. If you look at other solar systems being discovered by telescopes like NASA's Kepler and others, you find that our solar system is very different from the hundreds of others found so far. 
Most planet systems have very massive planets orbiting so close to their stars that life would be impossible. Our solar system has no planets inside the orbit of Mercury. Other systems have mostly planets inside that orbit. Our solar system is looking increasingly like the oddball. If we had planets close to our sun, the orbits of any planets in the habitable zone would be catastrophically disrupted by gravitational effects. Earth is the only body in the solar system with continental drift, the only planet we know with shifting tectonic plates. This has been key to the evolution of life, maybe even key to the origin of life at underwater volcanic fissures. The constant recycling of the Earth's crust provides us with a stable climate, mineral and oil deposits, and oceans with a life-sustaining balance of chemicals. Not only is our planet and its place in the solar system unusual, but the sequence of evolutionary events that led to this intelligent technological species also includes a number of highly improbable events. It seems to the experts very improbable that the right chain of amino acids could line up to create the first self-replicating molecule. But it had to have happened. There's the amazing invention of the four amino acid genetic code, without which there would be no life forms beyond the simplest viruses. The simplest life forms, called prokaryotes, took about 500 million years to, to appear, but it took two billion years for the first eukaryotes, cells with a nucleus and mitochondria, to appear. Why did it take so long? Apparently, it was highly improbable. All eukaryotes share a common ancestor. This rare event apparently occurred only once, and it took two billion years to happen. It might never have happened, but it did, here. We wouldn't be here to note it otherwise. Sexual reproduction is another rare event in our history. Charles Darwin noted that sexual reproduction drives the origin of new species. Without it, complex life would probably never have evolved. There's the invention of photosynthesis, which created the rare circumstance that our planet has an oxygen atmosphere. Metabolism requires oxygen. The first complex animal forms only appeared after phytoplankton had created an oxygen atmosphere. The fact that Earth has not just life, but intelligent life makes it doubly unique. Evolution has generously invented a brain that enabled the development of mathematics and abstract thinking, and a vocal apparatus that is far more expressive than that of any other mammal, enabling speech. In Stephen Jay Gould's book, Wonderful Life, he suggested that if he could go back to the time of the Cambrian explosion 450 million years ago, excuse me, 540 million years ago, and make a minor tweak or two, human beings would probably never have evolved. Then there is the skin of our teeth history. If you look at the fossil record, you see that life almost vanished several times. In the great Permian extinction 252 million years ago, over 95% of the ocean species and 70% of all land species went extinct. Several other times, life has almost vanished, but not quite. We're here by the skin of our teeth. This is the essence of the rare Earth hypothesis. Every planet and moon in our solar system has been blasted repeatedly by catastrophes like the ones that killed the dinosaurs. It's highly probable that such catastrophes, impacts, orbit changes, climate changes, are the same or worse in other stellar systems. Our line of ancestors only escaped over and over by the most improbable strokes of luck. In The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the Earth is demolished to make way for a galactic freeway. In reality, it gets almost demolished over and over by several different catastrophes. Some experts argue that the asteroid that extinguished the dinosaurs was a key to the future success of the class of mammals. For the dinosaurs, it was a no good, very bad day. But for us, it was an opportunity, a new beginning. In fact, it's been argued that the several mass extinctions have been responsible for the great diversity of life now on our planet. Without these occasional upheavals, 
life might have stagnated at a very primitive level. So you want this special balance of occasional upheavals, just not annihilation. To summarize, many experts have studied these points and have concluded that this sequence of improbable events is so rare that it might never have happened anywhere else. Biblical scholars might say they're not surprised. Well, I'm not a biblical scholar. These points I'm making are from a science perspective. Now, it's very natural to argue that with so many billions of stars in our galaxy, how can there not be another intelligent civilization? Maybe hundreds. But in that case, remember that our technological civilization is only a mere hundred years old. Out there in the cosmos, there must be some that are thousands or even millions of years old and thus vastly advanced. But that brings us to the famous Fermi paradox. If that's so, where are they? Why, after decades of sensitive searches, is there no sign of the inevitable noise or signals from such a civilization? I'm sorry to say that the reports and rumors of alien UFOs and abductions have been largely debunked. Please don't get your news from the National Enquirer. My thought is that very primitive viral or bacterial life may exist elsewhere, but the leap to an intellectual species like ours is rare and maybe unique. The key point is that there is a huge difference between simple life and complex life. The gulf between the simplest self-replicating organic molecules that could be called alive and the immense complexity of multicellular animals is vast. It took four and a half billion years for intelligent life to appear on Earth, a time longer than the stable lifetime of many stars. Our star and our planet granted this extensive stretch of time for this rare thing to happen. Of course, it's possible, as a recent Brewster Rocket comic strip suggests, that civilizations stagnate once they reach the smartphone stage. But seriously, not only might we be alone, but worse yet, there's no other place that we can reasonably move to should things get tough here. We live on a priceless pearl of a planet, and we have the responsibility to preserve it. The universe is counting on us. There is literally no place like home. So what do we need to do to become wise stewards of our planet? We can do nothing and hope for the best, or we can become vigilant activists for a save the planet revolution. Tell your representatives and senators how unique, fragile, and rare this planet is. Tell them that protecting this planet and its diversity of life is key to our survival. When a species goes extinct here, it goes extinct in the universe. The forests and the oceans are the great Noah's Ark of species on this planet. Tell them that just because life has survived here for three billion years tells us nothing about our chances for the future because we wouldn't be here otherwise. Let the search for extraterrestrial intelligence continue but I suspect that another 60 years still won't reveal it. Our species is very special, maybe unique, and our success is completely due to the success of this rare planet. Thanks for listening.